So I want you to think of yourself as a parent to your deeds. You produce them, you raise them, and you have all sorts of hopes for them. The only thing is, you don't see them yet. Now, just like a parent hopes that if they live long enough, their worldly children will comfort them and benefit them when they get older. We all hope that our hereafter children will comfort us and benefit us once we make that transition. The question is, how many deeds have you produced? How many deeds have you raised? And what's it going to be like to meet them for the very first time? Sam ibn al-Asam rahimahullah said, Inni nadartu ila al-khalq, faraaytu kulla wahidin yuhibbu mahbuban, fa idha dhahaba ila al-qabr, faraqahu mahbubu. He said that I looked at mankind and I noticed that everyone has something or someone that they love. But then once they die, that beloved person or thing leaves them. So I decided to learn to love my good deeds so that when I enter into my grave, they get to come with me. The Prophet said, The deceased is followed to his or her grave by three things. His family, his wealth, and his deeds. So his family and his wealth turn back from the grave and they go home. And his only companion that remains with him in his new home from now on is his collection of deeds. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Day of Judgment, what? يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ The day that wealth and children are no longer of any benefit. From this point onwards, deeds are going to be your comfort and they're going to be your currency. And the Prophet ﷺ once asked the companions, do you know what Allah meant when he said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ that those who turn away from my remembrance will have a constricted life. And will be raised up on the day of judgment blind. Now that constricted life is certainly across all realms. But here the Prophet ﷺ said, when they go to their grave, Allah places 99 dragons over that person. And the Prophet ﷺ went on to describe that every one of those dragons is like 70 serpents with seven heads stinging him and maiming him until the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It's at this point that your hereafter children are going to come to your aid for the very first time. And this is before the angels even come. The Prophet said that when the believer is placed into their grave and they hear the final footsteps of their family leaving, the punishment comes. And as the punishment comes from above, your prayer stands up and it puts its hand up and says, Ma qibali madkhal. You will not pass through me. So the prayer guards your head. And then the punishment comes to you from your right side. And the Prophet said, Your siyam, your fasting rises and stands guard and says, Ma qibali madkhal. You will not pass through me. And then to his left, his zakah stands and says, Ma qibali madkhal. You will not pass through me. And then at his feet, his sadaqa and sila, his goodness towards his family, and then his community, his voluntary charity, his truthfulness, his honesty, all of those things stand guard at the bottom and say, ma qibari madkhal, you will not pass through me. And then it's said to him, sit up. And he sits up. The Prophet ﷺ said that the sun is made to appear to him as if it's about to set. Yani it's almost Maghrib. It's about to be Maghrib. So the believer is accustomed to what? You're accustomed to Salah. You're accustomed to prayer. And if you wake up at an odd time, sort of disoriented, the first thing you worry about is, did I miss my prayer? So this person says, let me pray. And the angels say, you'll get to that. But first you have to answer our questions. Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Ma Adinuk. What is your religion? Man Nabiyuk, who is your prophet? Now, the only way you're going to be able to answer who your Lord is, is if you used to worship him. And the only way you're going to be able to answer what your religion is, is if you actually used to practice it. And the only way you're going to be able to answer who your prophet is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is if you used to actually follow him. And if you answer right, a voice cries out from the heavens and says, Sadaqa Abdi. My slave has spoken the truth. And subhanAllah, in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that those two angels that were first frightening, they say to you after you answer the questions correctly, You know, we knew you were going to say that. We knew you were going to answer these questions right. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then calls out, supply him with the furnishings from Jannah. Clothe him from the clothes of paradise. Open for him a gate to paradise so that some of its fragrance comes to him in his grave. And then his grave is expanded for him as far as his eye can see. And then at that point, you are laying in the clothes of Jannah with a window to Jannah. And everything starts to feel like Jannah, starts to feel like paradise. This visitor comes to you and this visitor has this beautiful face, has these fine clothes and has this pleasant scent. And he says to you, Abshir billadi yasurruk, hadha yawmuk alladhi kunta tu'ad. Glad tidings of that which will bring you happiness. This is your day which you were promised. And so the deceased says, Man ant, who are you? That face of yours is only going to be a face that brings good news. And that person responds to you and says, I am your good deeds. Now, subhanAllah, imagine what your good deeds look like all in one person. The beauty of that, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, if you actually used to act upon that guidance from Allah, what does your Qur'an, your prayer, your fasting, your charity all look like in the form of one person saying to you, I am your good deeds and I'm here to give you good news. First, your good deeds guarded you from your punishment, right? First, they stood guard all around you. And now here they are bringing you good news. And from here on out, they're personified and they're going to be your greatest source of benefit and they're going to be your greatest source of good company. Now, there are many narrations about people that are categorically protected from the punishment of the grave. You have the shaheed, the martyr. You have the one who dies of a stomach disease, or you have the one who dies on the day or night of Friday. And then you have all of these narrations about those who are specifically punished in the grave due to their sins. And so you want to avoid those sins, obviously, such as the slanderer or the one who is neglectful with their tahara, with their purification, or the adulterer or the one who deals with riba, with usury and interest. In any case, everything you experience now is part of the lead up to the last day. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when a person dies, he's shown his eventual place morning and evening. And so if he's amongst the inhabitants of paradise, he has this window to his place in paradise. And he's constantly told, this is where you're headed to. This is where you're going. And if he's amongst the people of the fire, may Allah protect us, he's shown his place in the fire and is told, this is where you're going. And no matter what his situation is, he's shown one more place. And he looks at this place and is told, This is the place that you're going to be sent to on the day of judgment. So for the believer who has his deeds with him as provision, He's got his clothes from paradise. You've got your window to paradise. When he sees his place on the day of judgment, he's not running away from it. In fact, he's saying, Rabbi aqim as Rabbi aqim as Rabbi aqim as My Lord, establish the hour. My Lord, establish the hour. My Lord, establish the hour. <laughs> فهو في عيشة راضية